that run we got 8.29 and 2.23. So that was northbound at 40 or at 30 miles per hour. So for 30 miles per hour, to be considered a safe speed, our reading needs to be less than 14 degrees. If it's over 12, it's still safe, but if it's less than 14, then it needs to be less than 14. Um, that's a little bit lower, so maybe this first reading was high because we had a hit a bump or didn't go through the curve as smoothly as we could have. Um, so we'll bump it back up to 35 and try that one more time. Notice this curve already has advanced curve signs with 35 mile per hour speed plaques. And the signs actually look pretty good, so we're just verifying that the right signs are out here. high reading due to the road, the surface of the roadway, like bumps in the road or pothole, or maybe we hit something that threw our number off. So we'll run it again at 35 and maybe we'll throw this number out if it seems higher than the other two numbers. second trial we got 12.53 and 1.36 so we'll take the 12.53 
30. And we got 10.41 and 1.73. So we write down the higher number. Was that the first time, 30? Going south now. Yeah. This will be our second time, 30. Correct. Study. And um, we're sitting here in a conference room. We've got our forms and our data laid out here. So we're going to go through our, we're going to crunch our numbers and go over the forms and uh, we'll show how we come up with the conclusions of the study to see how this curve should be properly signed. Okay, Jennifer? All right. <clears throat> we have our numbers here on our curve study form. So we did each speed, um, we did it three trials, and then we averaged those and rounded to the nearest whole number. So then we went through um, to determine what the safe advisory speed is. So if it's in this box, it has to be less than or equal to 12 to be safe. So 17 is not safe, 12 is safe. So this is our highest advisory speed that is safe for the northbound direction. Um, in the southbound direction, these numbers are both less than 12, so they're both safe, but we don't want to sign the curve with two different advisory speeds in two different directions. So we're going to go with our lowest safe advisory speed, so that's this 35 miles per hour. So now that we've determined what the recommended advisory speed is, we will use that to determine what signs to choose and where to place them. So here is a cheat sheet that has all the tables from the OMU TCD. So, Table 2C-5 tells us that if our posted speed or the legal speed is 55 miles per hour and our recommended advisory speed is 35 miles per hour, there is a difference of 20 miles per hour between the, the approach speed or our posted speed in this case and the advisory speed. So this tells us which signs are required. So. Then we go through, down through these boxes. So we either need a turn, a curve, a reverse turn, a reverse curve, or a winding road. And I think Ray had a paper that had this. So this first box is for the advanced signs. So this is a turn, and we typically use these if our advisory speed is 35 mi is 30 miles per hour or less. And we use the curve signs if it's 35 miles per hour or higher. So these signs go in advance of the curve to warn you of the conditions ahead. So if our change in speed is 20 miles per hour, this sign is required. So for this particular location, we would choose the curve sign, the advanced curve sign, or the W1-2. Um, now in the northbound direction, this is a left curve, but in the southbound direction, it's a right curve. So we would want to order 
one left curve and one right curve. And to determine what size sign you want to order, you use table 2C-2 and you look for um, the sign code. So this is a W1-2. So for a horizontal alignment sign, a W1-2. For um, single lane conventional road, you would use a 30 by 30 sign, inch sign. For a multi-lane, you use 36 by 36. And you always have the option of upsizing your signs if you feel that's appropriate. Um, but for the minimum standard, we would order one 30 by 30 left sign and one 30 by 30 inch right sign. And then we have our next box, which is the advisory speed plaque, which from our curve study sheet, we determined it was 35 miles per hour. So we would order two of those signs, and there's different sizes of those two. And that is where table 2C-3 tells you what size supplemental warning plaque to order. So if your warning sign, which was this one, is 30 inches by 30 inches, the square standard square plaque would be 18 by 18 inches. So we would need two 35 mile per hour 18 by 18 inch signs. Um, and then we go back to what's required. So now we've already got our advanced warning sign and we've got our advisory speed plaque. So now this is telling us we also need chevrons and or a one direction large arrow, which this is the chevron sign, the W1-8, and this is the large arrow sign, the W1-6. Um, for curves, which have the advisory speed of 35 miles per hour or greater, we typically use the chevron signs, and for turns, we typically use the one direction large arrow. Um, you can use either one in either case if you have a particular location you don't have a lot of room to fit all the chevrons in then you can switch over to the large arrow but typically that's what we do. So since this one is a curve we'll go with the chevrons. So now we need to figure out how many chevrons we need. So we take the length of our curve which we measured off of Google Maps and we decided it was 450 feet and then we take table 2C-6 the typical spacing of chevron alignment signs on horizontal curves so for a 35 mile per hour advisory speed that tells us they should be placed 120 feet apart so if our curve <coughs> length is 450, we take 450 divided by the 120 foot spacing. So we get 3.75 spaces. So you put your first sign and then 120 feet. So that takes us to 120, this is 240, this would be 360, um, 480. So that means that we need one, two, three, four, five signs. So you take, you take the length of your curve divided by your spacing. to get the number of spaces, which 3.75 goes to four spaces. But for four spaces, you actually need five signs. 